Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to have a short technical session instead of an art focused one because I'm hearing one question over and over again. It, it, it's a bit ridiculous. <laughs> the question is how many DPI do you set up in your work, in your canvases? And how many DPI or PPI do you work with? It is ridiculous because it is a bit of a useless question, but many people think it isn't useless in fact. Um, and I'm going to tell you why you should focus on different stuff than DPI and why DPI actually do not matter at all. Let's go! So first things first, what exactly do DPI and PPI mean and stand for? Let's start with PPI, which stands for points per inch. And points are nothing else but good old pixels. The ones you know from your screens, like the one you're most likely looking at right now. And the ones you also know from setting up a canvas in a graphic app, like Photoshop or Procreate. Each pixel is something like a little information unit containing one single color. So the pixels of an image are kind of a collection of information. And the order of all the pixels and the color information they contain, that's the image you can see on the screen. So let's just head over to Photoshop and set up a new canvas and see what settings we got there and which ones are important and which ones are not. So let's just start a new file. And as the pixels here on the right, you know that probably when you use Photoshop, but it's the same in other, other graphic apps as well. You add a pixel size for the width and also for the heights. And then we have resolution here. It's in German, it's Auflösung. <laughs> At least don't be confused. This is the resolution setting here um, and set, it's set to 72. And resolution, well, the term is maybe a little bit confusing because it suggests you that it changes anything about the quality in your image you're going to set up. But in fact, it doesn't. So if I type 72 here, if I type 300, 3000, or I don't know if it's possible, but maybe a million, it does not change anything about the quality in your image. You can put any number there, it does not matter. So why is that? The answer is because it is a meta value. It simply translates the pixels into screen size. So like as if you would tell a machine the size of your image in another language, which actually we don't even need anymore today. But this value comes from a time where it was important to know the PPI for digital use between different devices. So a little bit like take a 80s computer system telling another 80s computer system how to display an image. But in the 80s, 90s or today, the only value that describes the quality of your image are the pixel and nothing else. Let me describe that a little bit further and get more into detail so you understand what's behind all this. I'll quickly describe that to you here on my iPad. So um, we have thousand by thousand pixels, right? So let's take the canvas I just set up together with you. So let's draw that down here. Let's say this is the, the square that I made and it has thousand by thousand pixels. So not PS, that's not a car. <laughs> so um, let's say we want to display this image in 300 DPI. So we have thousand pixels. Now we take these thousands and divide it through 300. This gives us like thousand through 300 is uh, 3.33. Not such a beautiful number, but you'll get it. And um, this is the inch, right? So we have 300 points per inch and divide the thousand by the 300 and we have 3.33 inch. So the image later is 3.33 inch square, large. But the information, the pixels, which is the information in the image is still the same. We, have, we still have a thousand pixels. So let's translate this image into, uh, let's say, 
1000 uh, pixel, 1000 uh, DPI, sorry. So we have 1000 divided through 1000 DPI or PPI in this case, sorry. We come to DPI a little bit later. So we have one inch. So we have a smaller image of one inch here on the screen, but the information of the image does not change. It's still 1000 pixels here, 1000 pixels here, 1000 pixels wherever we want to display this image. So this only describes how much information you have in this image. You can make, uh, make a test if you want. You go to Photoshop and take a photo and save it with a 1000 pixel square in 72 DPI, for example, or PPI, and you save it in 300 or 1000 PPI, and the size of the file, so the megabyte of the file, will be exactly the same, doesn't matter. So now you might ask me, Stefan, okay, this is fine, this is all right, but what about printing? I need a certain resolution for printing my work in a magazine or as a poster or as an art print like this one I made lately. Uh, this is eight to 10 inches, by the way. And um, printers tell you to have a resolution of at least 300 DPI, which is quite the industry standard. This is correct, that's right. But again, you are translating. And this is where we come to the difference between PPI and DPI and what's the specifics for both of them. And DPI means dots per inch. So what are dots compared to points, you may ask? And that's a good question. Dots is just the tiny little points a printer makes when printing something like this. So if you take a look at my print here, this is eight by 10 inch. And if you look very, very close, which won't be possible without a microscope or something, you, you would see tiny little points that the printer makes on the canvas here. And these are the dots that are the D in DPI. Basically, we can make our lives, thanks for being sharp camera. <laughs> Basically, we can just make our lives easy here and say that dots and points are practically the same. Of course, there is a difference, a technical one, but let's just be easy here and say DPI is the same as PPI. Now, of course, what the DPI value helps you with is finding the right size in pixels for your artwork and setting up the canvas in the app you use, like Photoshop, Procreate, Clip Studio, wherever. And uh, so let's say you have a 10 to 8 inch print you want to make, like this one here, it's the same size. So I want to print this and I know, okay, I have this side 10 inches, so I need to set it up 10 by 300 DPI. It's 3000 pixels and I have eight here and I have um, math, yeah, it's uh, 2400 pixels. So I know when I set up the canvas, I need to make it at least 3000 by 2400 pixels to print it in 10 to 8 inch. Let's quickly go back to Photoshop for this and see how Photoshop can help you calculate this because you don't need to do this in your head. So you can go to, for example, inch or centimeters here on the side where it says pixel and we just put in centimeters because I'm in Germany. <laughs> And let's say we want to print something by 30 to 20 centimeters. Works just the same with pixels. And now the resolution here comes in handy because if I type, type in 300 here, because we want the printer to make 300 dots per inch on the paper to make it look good and sharp, then the program calculates that you need 3,543 by 2,362 pixels. So that's where it comes in handy because you translate the centimeters into pixels. This is what the DPI help you with. And this is why I'm calling it translating because it translates the size of the canvas into your pixels or vice versa but the information in the image, in your artwork, will always stay the same. Yeah, and that's actually it. So uh, many people learn from somewhere, I even learned it at art school from a professor actually, that you need to put an eye on the DPI or PPI when you're setting up a canvas in a program. Now you know you don't have to, and the only thing that matters are the pixels, easy as that.
So um, that's basically it. I want to answer one more question though, because I also hear a lot like the question, how many pixels I use, which is the right question to ask. And I want to get to that a little bit because when you print something, it's easy. You just have to see what the size of the print is and then you know the pixels you need. But when you want to use something digitally for Instagram, for putting on your website or so, uh, that's of course a different question. And um, personally, I like to work with at least a 4K resolution. This means 4K pixels on the short side of the canvas minimum. Let me just show you these here. I have a canvas of 4000 by, for example, 5000 or 4000 by 6000, depending on the ratio. But the short side, as you see, is always 4K. This is quite large and it actually limits my amount of layers I can use in Procreate where, where I work a lot. But I'm willing to take this compromise because remember, for example, when you set up a piece of 2000 pixels, you can only print it in around six to seven inch, which is really not that large. And I personally prefer to be more flexible when it comes to unexpected needs for a print or something, because I can tell you it happened to me and there's nothing more frustrating if you have put hours and hours into an artwork and then you have an offer to print it somewhere in a large size and you just can't deliver it because you don't have the size. So you can only remake it or just not take the offer. Uh, happened to me a couple of times, so I prefer to take the compromise and go with a larger size. And then, for example, for the digital use, for posting it on Instagram, on my website or so, I usually aim for resizing it later um, somewhere between like 1000 and 2000 pixels. So you can always resize it lower, but upsizing something is a bit difficult. It, ha it can work until a certain point, but it's really not recommended. So start large and then go smaller is definitely the best way to do it. All right, guys, that was my short technical excursion. I hope we learned something. I hope you found it helpful and can go back to making nice art with the right canvas sizes now. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. So if something pops to your brains, uh, don't let it fly away, but leave it here so I can get back to you because I think for a topic like this, you may have a couple of follow-up questions, more in-depth stuff. Uh, please let me know. I'm going to answer everyone who wants to know more about this topic. And uh, last thing to say is thanks for watching. Please leave a follow if you like this. And next time we'll be back with more, I guess, more art-focused content. <laughs> thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.